Welcome to Fitness for Dummies, part two. I'm gonna take you through my leg day, but we're also gonna talk about one of the most overrated concepts in the fitness industry, and that's consistency. Unfortunately, most people think consistency means going to the gym X number of times a week for X number of times a year, being as consistent as you can with how many times you go to the gym. But there's another meaning to that, which also adds a whole new depth of your fitness lifestyle what you know about consistency is going to the gym x number of times a week for x number of times a year staying as consistent as you can throughout the duration that you're in the gym and although that is completely correct of what consistency actually means what you want to understand is that consistency doesn't just mean the times that you go to the gym but it also means the number of things that you do in the gym for an x period of time let me just give you an example really quick when you go to the gym five times a week 300 days out of the year that is your consistency that is how consistent you are with how many times you go to the gym but instead of just counting that let's say day number one is chest biceps shoulders day number two is back triceps and abs these are the things that you normally do and in the chest day that you're normally hitting you will do bench press first as a flat then an incline press next then chest flies this is the number of moves that you do during your workout now when it comes to the next thing that you're going to do for the next week for your next chest day instead of doing that same order you're probably going to mix it up and now do dumbbells first and then you're going to go to a machine incline press next and then you're going to go do cable fries instead of a machine fly next you're changing it up it's not staying consistent sometimes you'll even do chest flies first and then you'll go and do a flat press next something like this is inconsistent and that's where you lack and a bunch of other people lack on what this is known as and was made famous by is shocking the muscle from arnold schwarzenegger this concept is so outdated this concept doesn't even fit into the modern day idea of muscle hypertrophy or trying to gain muscle as fast and as efficient as possible unfortunately so many people fall victim to the idea of shocking the muscle in order to progressively get better in the gym you need Need to keep the split and the number of things you do and the things that you do in the gym consistent through a nice long period of time not just by a couple of weeks or a couple of months but for a consistent period of time for up to maybe four to six months at a time now arnold did a fantastic job with teaching people how to train with intensity arnold did multiple sets back to back 30 seconds rest but he would change his workouts so often arnold was the epitome of someone who was very hard working in the gym and within reason i understand and why at the time he would talk about shocking the muscle because the idea and the concept of painful days following your workout in other words what's called delayed onset muscle soreness was very needed in order to understand whether you trained hard or not and this is completely not true you don't need to be absolutely sore after your workout or days after your workout just to be able to recover and hit whatever else next you need to hit Arnold did a fantastic job with telling people how to train hard and I think that's where I'm not gonna try to draw the line with what his concepts were talking about but the idea that you need to change it up because your body knows that you're going to do the bench press first and then your body knows that you're going to do an incline press next and then a chest fly right after that so you have to switch it up and do something else first so your body doesn't know what in fact it's trying to hit this is not true and in fact it goes against everything with the concept of progressive overload because what you have to understand about progressive overload is that it's needed in order to build the muscle and if you're changing things up consistently every single week or every single time you work out rather than staying consistent with what you pick to work out with you're not going to be able to know how you are progressing so how are you supposed to know in order what to do in the gym in order to get better at the gym and get better at the weights and get bigger and progress in the gym altogether as you're in the gym what you're going to want to do is track your progress so when you stay consistent with the moves that you pick the reps that you pick and the intensity that you pick you're going to be able to track your progress through the duration that you are training so let's put it this way if you go to the gym on monday and you have the bench press the incline press and then the chest flies what you're gonna want to do is do the bench press then the incline and then the chest flies and do that for about four to six months when you're doing that for about four to six months you can track your progress to see if you're getting better at that lift by either increasing the weight or being able to the same amount of reps during your previous set that you did prior to the last chest day that you had this is progressively overloading this is what progressive overload is when you're shocking the muscle it's going to be way harder for you to progress and it's going to be way harder for you to track to see where you are actually at in terms of your goals in terms of your progress in the gym because that my friend is exactly what progressive overload is progressive overload doesn't mean being able to do more sets and more reps than you previously did on your previous workout of that chest or that back because if you were able to do four sets of eight to twelve reps for the flat bench press that you did last week for 165 pounds and now this week 
you can do four sets of 16 to 20 reps. That doesn't mean progressively overloading because you increase the number of volume or increase the number of repetitions that you did. Progressively overload or progressive overload means being able to do the same number of reps for the same number of sets by increasing the weight by the same exact environmental factors that you had last time. If you were shocking the muscle, as Arnold would love to say, you wouldn't necessarily be able to track to see how well you are improving or how well you are progressively overloading because you are changing up your split. And this is exactly what holds people back in the gym by not being able to progressively overload because you're doing so many different things or you feel like you're not growing fast enough so you change the split over and over again until you find something that works, which is good if you're going to trial and error, but you have to give it time so that you can stick with the two definitions of consistency that I just gave you. So realistically, you really don't want to go about shocking the muscle because shocking the muscle has no scientific evidence. You want to be able to train hard in the gym by tracking your progress. And by doing so, shocking the muscle has no basis for it. So skip shocking the muscle, go train hard, progressively overload, and do the same thing over and over again. That's it.